Hey, my lovelies. How are you guys doing? This is Coach Joan, Reray Life Coaching, author, speaker, uh, and I am excited to bring you another episode of Real Talk for wifepreneurs and mompreneurs, mom muggles, boss ladies, lady bosses, however you want to define yourself, this podcast uh, is for you. And this particular episode, I am going to be discussing that whole idea or mindset of hustle and side gig and really getting us to change that perception or that language because language dictates thoughts and values and those values and thoughts and perceptions that we create because of language will then dictate our behavior or dictate other people's behavior and their perceptions of us. So I wanted to really get into talking about you know, what does hustle mean? How does this relate to that whole gig economy uh, mindset? And then what do we need to do to shift our thinking into really looking at ourselves as solo entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs or small business owners? Um, So we're going to really dive into that discussion today. And I really hope that you find a lot of meaning in this conversation because I think a lot of people always use or constantly use the word hustle. You know, I got my hustle. I got a hustle. You know, I got my side hustle going. You know, I'm looking to make, you know, uh, uh, a passive income or additional income. And, And that whole mindset impacts how you move, impacts how you conduct business impact how people will treat you or how serious they will see you. So my dear wifepreneurs and my mom moguls and my boss ladies and my lady bosses, all of you wonderful women entrepreneurs and hint, hint in parentheses or air quotes, even my male entrepreneurs, this does apply to you too. So if I have awesome, wonderful men listening, please know you can also apply this message. While I know my focus is predominantly on topics that impact women entrepreneurs, please know that male entrepreneurs can absolutely use many of the suggestions that I talk about. But of course, when I talk about menopause (laughs) and being an entrepreneur, you may not want to care about that, my dear men, unless you have beautiful women in your lives who are going through menopause and you want to understand them better, then of course, of course, you should still listen because it'll give you insight. So I never want men to think that uh, this podcast is strictly for women or only for women, because I do believe that men can benefit from a lot of the information that I provide and what we talk about um, from the information. Even if it doesn't apply to you, you can still learn, you know, uh, especially if you are uh, an entrepreneur that have a large female clientele. So this can definitely help you. All right. So if you would like to be part of the live conversation, if you want to participate, if you want to share your thoughts live on the podcast, you are more than welcome to call in. I made it really easy. So, you know, most people have Gmail or Google or something like that. Sign into Google and go into Google Meeting and you can actually click the Google Meeting link that's in the chat box here and you could join me. Join me live. You can see my face. I mean, I'm looking kind of, you know, average today (laughs) but you could join me live um and you can dial in if you would like to join in by phone and ask your questions or join into the conversation you can dial 440-549-4093 again that number is 440-549-4093 and the pin code for the the uh meeting is 320-927-637, hashtag, or the pound sign. Again, that's pin is 320-927-637, pound sign, or hashtag symbol. So feel free to join in. Um, And I would love to have you on live with me and ask your questions and uh, share your thoughts. So 
With that being said, let's dive right into this conversation. So I think it might be helpful to first start off with like, how do we define hustle? And you know, the the Webster's Dictionary or Miriam Dictionary or dictionary.com, you know, everybody's definition of hustle is pretty um, similar. And basically it's it falls into one or two categories. It's either a con, some type of con, um, or either it, it's inferred that a hustle is to hurry something along, to push and move something forward and think about it without really thinking. And you know what that reminds me of? A shiesty salesperson. So when I, people say, yeah, you know, I'm working my side hustle for me. And I don't know about anybody else. I'm just saying me personally, it gives me the image of a shiesty car salesman trying to sell me a car I don't need or trying to sell me a car that they know does not work and is a lemon and is going to be a problem and they don't care so like we have to be very careful about language because again when you look at the actual definition of language hustle simply means it's a con it's a con and when you're in business do you really want to give the perception that you're trying to beat somebody out their money or you're trying to get over on someone. But that's what a hustle really is. You know, again, it reminds me of, I don't know if anybody have ever seen the game Three Card Monty. I know in New York, I remember when I was little, okay, sidebar conversation. I remember when I was little and uh, we lived in Brooklyn, but we were in Manhattan, me, my mother and my sister. And I remember, oh my God, I guess I was about, seven or eight maybe I can't remember I was young I was under 10 and my mom played (laughs) three card Monty and that's the one where like you had to guess where the king was or where the ace was and they kept flipping the cards and then you would say okay I think it's that one and you flip it over and you lost your money so yeah my mother lost a lot of money I think she had lost like 50 bucks that day because she was playing card uh, three card Monty that's a hustle Three card Monty is a hustle game. (laughs) So anytime I hear the word hustle, or when somebody says, yeah, they're going to go work their side hustle, I'm like, ugh, because it's the first thing that comes to my mind. And so then it's like, well, how can I take you seriously? You know, no matter what your side gig might be, how can I really take you seriously if you're calling it a hustle? So, you know, I felt that it should really be stressed by language what does hustle mean now I know before anybody get on me and start saying well according to urban dictionary it really means like you're working really really hard to get what you need or to you know be successful and you're doing everything you can that that you can everything that you can do you are doing to create success but keep in mind even under that context text of the urban dictionary's definition of hustle (laughs) it's still if you're out there doing anything and everything to make a dollar you could still be accused of being a con artist and taking advantage of people in order to move forward that is not the image that you want it really isn't and like I said language will dictate thoughts and values and perceptions and that those perceptions and thoughts and and values will dictate your behavior and so you gotta really be careful of how you describe your business or what you're doing even if you are riding or doing uber or lyft even if you are doing doordash you know it doesn't matter it's a role that's paying you and it's legitimate it really is a legitimate thing even if you're a vendor and you're selling cbd if you're selling whatever whatever product or service or t-shirts whatever it is you're doing whatever you're selling understand that it is an income type of generating business And so I want us to start looking at how do we change our mindset from this idea of a side hustle and move it to really being an entrepreneur. 
even if you're in doing a gig, even if you call it a gig, how serious can someone take it? You know, and I know they have the new definition of a gig economy and a gig economy is really those short term freelance types of projects that people do. Now, I'm a coach and I'm a trainer um, and I also do consultancy, right? And so I have a lot of gigs and again, I'm doing my air quotes gigs. I have a lot of gigs. And I do a lot of different things under the umbrella of my business, my registered legitimate legal business. And so even if you are getting gigs, it's it's still about the mindset. When I think of gigs, I think of uh, musicians, you know, I got a gig tonight, you know, and I'm playing, you know, and singing, you know, on a gig. And, but again, it's the same mindset because a gig is nothing but a short term project. That's really all it is. Whether you're on a W-2 or whether you're freelancing, a gig is a short term project. That's all it is. But again, what does that term or that language convey to other folks? Yeah, this is my gig. Think about it. If you're going to someone that's a hairstylist to do your hair and they're like, this is my gig. Well, then does that sound to you that they're serious? It sounds like something that they wanted to get into for this moment that they're going to stop doing in the next moment, right? It's a gig. Uh, it's a hustle. Um, how can someone take you seriously when you use that language? And maybe that it is that for you. Maybe it is a temporary thing that you're doing for three months to earn a couple of bucks to help you make ends meet or help tie you over to you do something else because it's not your career. And I understand that. I really do understand that. But understand you treat a gig like a gig. But if you look at a gig differently, you're going to treat it differently. If you look at a hustle differently, you're going to treat it differently. But the question is, what do you want to get out of the, the situation? So the first thing in changing the mindset to transfer out of gig and hustle or side hustle is how do you move into the realm of perceiving yourself as a solo entrepreneur? So what is a solo entrepreneur? Again, I like language. I love words. And so I paraphrase, you know, Webster, Merriam-Webster's dictionary again. I paraphrase and say a solo entrepreneur is basically an individual who decides to go into business to have their own business or even multiple businesses and take and accept the risk of being a business owner who may not have employees. So basically you have a business or you have many businesses and you probably don't have full-time employees and you are really it. You are the all that be all to your venture, right? And so the whole idea is that by seeing yourself as a solo entrepreneur, because I'm sure I don't care if you are selling Mary Kay or Unique or CBD oil, or if you're a massage therapist, or if you are a hairstylist, or if you're a manicurist, or if you're a life coach like me, or if you're a yoga guru, or if you're a personal instructor, I don't care. Take any one of those types of jobs or career paths. If you are in a position where you take ownership of your business, if you take the risk a large amount of risk. If you're responsible for getting your clients, if you're respons responsible for meeting a quota and earning a certain amount of money in order to get a certain percentage that's going to help you economically, you are an entrepreneur. Based upon the definition, you're an entrepreneur, right? So, the first thing you have to understand is how do you see yourself? Even if it is a gig, even if it is temporary, 
by seeing yourself as a solo entrepreneur, that is how people are going to treat you. By seeing yourself as someone who's taking a huge financial risk by getting into a business, by being a business owner, you're an entrepreneur. And you're a solo entrepreneur if you don't have any employees. Now, granted, I have contractors that work for me and serve certain roles. Like I have a social media manager. I have a virtual assistant. I have an accountant. I have a lawyer. Now, they're not employees where they're on a W-2 and I'm paying them, you know, a certain hourly wage. No, but they are contractors helping meet a role because I'm paying them, you know, based upon the a type of work and the amount of hours that they're giving me and I do a whole 1099 or either invoicing type of system where they're working for me but they're not necessarily my employees but they do help me get the job done that I need done right so I do take the full risk of my business I do pay taxes I have an EIN number you know I am a legitimate business and I find it funny because when you have the mindset that it's a hustle or a gig, you kind of lose sight of your value and what you offer. Like, you know, yeah, if you're purchasing my um, my a la carte service where you only want one coaching session or two coaching sessions, yeah, I'm going to charge you 125 125 an hour or 125 per session. And, you know, if I was hustling or if this was a gig, then how can somebody take it seriously that I'm charging you $125 per session? You see what I'm saying? Um, so I think that we have to really think about, well, what am I doing? Um, who am I? How do I see myself as an entrepreneur? So first part of the mindset, how do you see yourself? What do you want out of the venture? How do you want your clients to perceive you? And how serious are you about what you're doing to earn income, even if it's part time, even if it's temporary, right? The next thing that you have to do is use the appropriate language that demonstrates who you are so that people can take you seriously. It's really about the long term. Um, and so what I think is really important is that the more you start to use language around, I'm a solo entrepreneur, I'm a female entrepreneur, I'm a wifepreneur, I'm a mompreneur, that changes the dynamics and the conversation with your clients. Even if you're driving Lyft, right, or Uber, you are an entrepreneur. You are. Because technically you're taking the risk. You're taking the risk of your car. Somebody vomiting in your car. <laughs> you're taking the risk if you have a car accident. You are taking risk. You are an entrepreneur. And you can sell yourself as a vehicle service entrepreneur. You know, that sounds so much different and much more, I don't know, classy than, yeah, I, 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 you know, my side gig is hustle. I mean, my side gig is a Uber or my hustle is Lyft. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a ride share entrepreneur. Oh my God, that's so cool. I'm a solo entrepreneur. So much different. Um, if you sell t-shirts, you know, I'm a solo entrepreneur of my own t-shirt business. That is just so much more serious, professional, um, high end. So that when you say my t-shirt costs $35, you know, I'd rather hear you, you know, yes, my business as a solo entrepreneur, I'm into fashion tees, you know, I create fashion tees. Like that puts a different spin on you charging $35, $40 for a t-shirt. I think it also puts a certain perception in your client's mind of who they're dealing with. But remember, before I have a caveat, I have a caveat. Woo. 
you have to walk the walk too. If you're talking to talk, walk the walk. So if you're putting out there that you are a solo entrepreneur, you are a rideshare professional, however you want to do a fashion tea guru, however you want to put it, you need to be able to support that claim up with um, uh, 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 support with, 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 with evidence, with quality, you know, you don't want to have a dumpster fire, man. You don't want to say, you know, I'm a, a, a rideshare entrepreneur or a rideshare professional. And then you have a funky car that's all beat up and you're not giving your clients water or mints or phone chargers, you know, if they need it or good conversation, if they want it or silence, if they don't want to talk to you, like you have to come with quality and good customer service and products that are beneficial to your client so that you are supporting the claim of being a solo entrepreneur and not a hustler. Because anybody can say they're great, but the proof is in the pudding. Anybody can say they're an entrepreneur, but if you're really scamming people, if you're doing pyramid schemes, if you're like more concerned with the money and not the person then yeah you're a hustler and your side hustle is exactly what you called yourself and that's what you are so you don't want to say you're great and wonderful and you're doing all this wonderful stuff as an entrepreneur but then you're giving people shit you know and and poor quality and poor service and poor product you don't want to do that at all so make sure you back up who and what you are and what your business does and what you provide because the worst thing in the world, the quickest way to lose customers is call yourself a solo entrepreneur, but you're really a hustler. Seriously, that is the quickest way to lose your clients. So be an entrepreneur. Use language that's going to describe who you are. And I bet you dollars to donuts that you will be able to change how you walk, how you move, how you navigate your clients and how your clients perceive you. And I noticed like, and let me just kind of, kind of tap into some of my own personal experiences. Like when I, my first business, the first business that I started, um, was uh, uh, a word, word, word processing. I had a whole word processing um, consulting company that I started. And, you know, I did originally used to call it my hustle. And I noticed that I really wasn't getting clients. And most of the clients that I did get, they were like college students who wanted help with writing their research papers. And then truthfully, a lot of those particular individuals wanted me to write their uh, research paper. Like they thought I was going to do the research and I was going to do the writing and I was going to do everything. They were just going to give me the topic and tell me to go with it. I'm like, first of all, that's plagiarism and I'm not doing that. Um, Second of all, you need to provide me with a whole bunch of information, like an outline, research sources, topic, theme. You need to give me a skeleton for which I need to put flesh on. And all of this stuff is going to be your words, your ideas, your thoughts, and you need to come up with it. I'll take your notes. I'll take your papers. I'll take your resources. And then I will create and format a great format, a great document for you. But I I just noticed that a lot of people really wanted me to plagiarize and really wanted me to ghost write, if you will. And my feelings were like, yeah, that's not necessarily what I do. And one of the things I stopped doing was saying it was my hustle or my gig at the time. And so when I started calling myself, you know, a tech writer or a document specialist, shit changed. Like it changed immediately. You know, I had an EIN number. Um, I, you know, set up a banking account. I, I, I said I was a business. I paid my taxes on it. I was a business. And once I did that and I moved from this is my side hustle, this is my gig, I was able to consult at companies like one of my first corporate clients was a pharmaceutical company and I was able to get in as a tech writer. And once I did that, oh my Lord, oh my Buddha, 
let me tell you, I was able to start commanding six figures. I was able to get multiple different corporate clients. I was able to really hone my skills and my understanding of the of the pharma industry. And like that became my business. And so while I predominantly have ventured off and focused on my coaching and my coach training and consultancy, you know, read ready life coaching, while that is my key focus, don't get me wrong, if I need extra income, if I'm trying to, let's say, I, I want to purchase a certain equipment, or I might need extra um, support in a month with my VA or my social media, or if I want to, like I'm updating my website, I will absolutely use my sub business or my, my, um, my, uh, uh, my DBA to do technical writing and to do other work that I know brings in an immediate income. And it is a business. It is not a side hustle, you know? And when you add that on to being a certified woman owned business, a certified minority owned business, a certified, um, uh, just certified business enterprise in general, that opens up the door for me to work with, uh, government agencies and corporations and other individuals um, um, and other companies and help me collaborate with other people in order to bring an in income into my company. And I don't think company, matter of fact, I know companies don't want to work with someone who says they have a hustle. They don't want to really necessarily work with somebody who says, yeah, this is my gig. If you really want to bring income in and you want to make those six figures, those seven figures, you got to stop seeing yourself as a hustler or a gigger and start seeing yourself as a solo entrepreneur and opening up the opportunities for you to collaborate and work with corporations and other businesses and government agencies so that you can really bring in true income for your company. And I'm telling you, when I changed my mindset, what? Oh my gosh, 15 years ago, about 15 years ago, 15 years ago, between 15 and 18 years ago, when I changed my mindset, let me tell you guys, I'm telling you, like the doors opened up and you also, and again, this is your readiness. If you're ready to pay taxes, if you're ready to really establish your entity on a, link, a legal perspective, you wanna register your business. You wanna get an EIN number and I have a caveat. Make sure you talk to an attorney, make sure you talk to an accountant, um, make sure you know the pros and cons of registering your business because that's another story I got to tell you my second business when I wanted to be a career coach and resume writer that was kind of like the focus was resume writing and I did some career coaching with it yeah I had set up the wrong type of business people oh my lordy I made the hugest mistake I set myself up as an S corp oh my god I should have talked well actually I did talk to somebody from the um, small business association and he just dicked me around he just I'm you know I shouldn't say that but he did he dicked me around and I guess he wasn't as knowledgeable as I thought he should have been and he advised me to be a S corp when I really should have been an LLC you know, but that's neither here nor there now, but be very careful, but definitely get help. Talk to many different mentors, um, many different coaches, go out there and, and, and talk to tax accountants and tax attorneys and, and, and business lawyers and all that good stuff. Just do your due diligence before you apply for EIN and trademark your name, which read ready is trademark, by the way, registered trademark. Um, and um, when you, before you get into setting up your business legally and, and financially, just make sure you do your due diligence, get your coaching, get your mentoring, talk to people. There's a lot of free sources. I love SCORE, S-C-O-R-E dot org. Love SCORE, love SCORE. Um, they are a group of retired business people who they actually do mentoring. They mentor you and help you figure out, you know, the direction of your business and your branding and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
you can also go to the SBA. There are many free workshops. There are small fee workshops uh, online and offline in every state has, should have or probably has an SBA office. Um, they can guide you, even though I know I did go to SBA originally and he didn't give me great information. Before you start setting stuff up, just talk to different SBA people. That's all. Talk to other people in your industry. Utilize LinkedIn. Seriously, utilize LinkedIn. There's a lot of professionals there. Get in some of these Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups. Like I have a group, I'm authentically me. I tell entrepreneurial women, ask your questions all the time. You know, you can ask questions about business development. What have you done? Where should I go? What's, what kind of risks are these business types and yada, yada. So, you know, so that's my caveat is that do your due diligence first. But once you feel ready and prepared, I do highly encourage entrepreneurs to register their business. Be legitimate because when you get that legitimacy, it opens the door for so many opportunities that you don't get when you get paid under the table. (laughs) When you are, you know, not really legitimizing your 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 business or what you're doing or the products and services that you provide i also highly suggest trademarking your name or trademarking your logo or trademarking um your tagline all that kind of stuff i mean it really does make a difference in how you're perceived and and it really makes a difference in how you communicate your business and and what projects you take on and what projects you don't take on. Like I said, you know, when I was calling myself a gig and a hustle or a side hustle, I wasn't getting the caliber of clients that I wanted. Once I changed my mindset and started using solo entrepreneur, dot technologist, uh, technical writer, you know, now professional coach, you know, mindfulness coach, mindfulness trainer, um, author and speaker. Now that I use more professional language, it's a big difference in who interacts with me, what I charge, how I charge and people feeling confident in the fact of what I'm charging and how much is being charged. They know that they're going to get a benefit because it's not no hustle. It, I'm not hustling them and they know it and they can trust it. You know what I mean? So ladies and in parentheses, my gentlemen, my entrepreneurs, my fellow entrepreneurs, when you change your mindset about who you are and your business, I'm telling you, you're going to move differently. You're going to talk differently and, and, and you're going to change not just your mindset, but the mindset of your potential clients on who you are as a business owner, because you are a business owner. You are, even if you're an entrepreneur on a W2, you're still an entrepreneur because you're really contracting your skills as a commodity. And please remember Your skills are a commodity that you can sell in the marketplace. What you do is a commodity. As a coach, my PhD, my credentials, my certifications, my knowledge, the tools that I've created, the business I've created, it is a valuable commodity that I can sell to other businesses, to other individuals who are willing to buy because I I am quality. I'm a quality commodity. And you can capitalize on your skills, on your knowledge, on your products and services that you do, you can capitalize on it when you see yourself as a business owner and a solo entrepreneur. I am, man, I'm telling you. So before I move on, I I don't have a sponsor this week, but if you are interested in being a sponsor, please feel free to 
email me coaching at readreadycoaching.com or you can go to my website readready.com and click on the reach out uh, link and I have my little contact form you can fill that out and you can send me an email or shoot me a message if you are interested um, in more information if you are interested in my services and products please and one of the products uh, or services that I am going to talk about today is my different coaching plans and I know a lot of people um, seriously a lot of people have um, difficulty you know with expenses you know but my prices are my prices I'll be the first one to say, you know, my prices are my prices. I do have packages. Um, I do have my single sessions and it can range um, in prices. But I decided to come up with a membership plan that provides the experience of coaching and mentoring um, and different services, giving people value without being a really long-term commitment, if you will, for the coachee, for the client. Um, and I wanted to do something that I thought was beneficial for people who may not be able to afford, you know, certain packages and certain services, and that's okay. So I came up with two membership plans. I have my Biz Diva Coaching, that's for my wifepreneurs and my entrepreneurs. And I have my coaching for coaches membership plan. And that, of course, is for my coaches. And basically, if you go to my site, readreadycoaching.com or readready.com, and you click on plans and pricing, and that's in the services link, you can look at the memberships, um, or you go to the plans and, and pricing page, um, you'll see the two subscription plans. And I'll put that in the chat box for you so that you can go directly to the link. And basically, you get like, um, a certain number of coaching sessions you get access to the newsletter which have nice little tidbits and morsels for you to help you you get access to our VIP um, LinkedIn group whereas the Facebook group is free anybody can join it who feels like they identify with a biz mom a biz woman or entrepreneur or um, if you identify as a coach uh, there are Facebook groups that I have for free but if you want the VIP access where we really get into the nitty-gritty where we have group coaching sessions and all that good stuff um yes you want to do the subscription plan so you get uh two free webinars you get your vip access you get access to the newsletter that's specific to you and your needs in your group so i do have a more general one for general public people but i also have a newsletter specifically for you with tips and morsels and tricks and hacks and all that good stuff to help you with your business whether you're a coach or an entrepreneur uh, but you also get to participate in my affiliate reward system where i pay you for your referrals and leads and uh, uh recommendations because you know what I am successful because of people like you and a lot of my business is really word of mouth. So I figure, hey, if you're sending people my way, you should get a reward for it. So every month I send a reward uh, bonus check, real money, not credits or anything like that. You get real money. You get a bonus check uh, every month. And also I have links to freebies and downloads and eBooks and audio files and all that good stuff. Plus you get a 20% discount on eligible services and training and events that we have. And you can also get a free trial for seven days. Um, and for the coaches, not only do you get all of that good stuff that I mentioned for entrepreneurial women, for coaches, you are listed in our, or my, um, my coach directory for 12 months. You also get mentoring and group coaching. You also get opportunities to receive paid opportunities uh, because I do work with other corporations. Sometimes I'm in a situation where I need other coaches to support a particular project. So I first go to my Read Ready coaches who are part of um, the Read Ready family. And I let you guys know, hey, Here's a particular um, uh, 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 opportunity and I allow you guys to bid on the opportunity and you are more than welcome 
to work on different projects and get clients straight from Read Ready. So there's a lot. You also get the affiliate the affiliate reward program. You get freebies for you, and you also get 50% discount on eligible services, training, and events. So it is a, a monthly fee. is one flat monthly fee, and that's it. And you get a lot. So just go to the site and you'll see it. You'll get it. Um, and um, yeah. Yeah, so that's the service that I am talking about today. And I'm going to put this in the link for you so that you guys have the link. All right, so just go there and you can sign up for uh, the seven day free trial. And then you can actually pay the monthly subscription plan and you have access to all these wonderful services. So I am so glad you guys tuned in tonight. Um, I really hope that the information that I provided is helpful, that it gave you something to really think about, you know, when it comes to how you present yourself, um, the language that you use to describe your business and what you do and who you are. I really do hope that this information was helpful. And um, yeah, join me next week. And uh, look out, if you follow me on social media, please follow me on social media, like, share, follow, follow, share, like, uh, comment, you know, on the podcast episodes. If you follow me, make sure you like, share, follow all that good stuff on social media. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Pinterest, I'm on Instagram. So yes, 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 yes. Uh, feel free to uh, share information there. And um you will see the post for what the topic is going to be if you are a re-ready site member which is what i just discussed like two seconds ago um you'll also get information there about upcoming topics if you have a topic you want me to bring let me know all you gotta do is make a comment send an email send a question you know dm me just let me know what kinds of topics are beneficial to you as a wifepreneur, as a mompreneur, as a lady boss, you know, or just being career minded, being a career minded professional. You let me know what's beneficial to you and we will talk about it on Real Talk for Wifepreneurs and Mom Moguls. All right, loves, you go out there, create awesome sauce for yourself. For others, and you know, ladies, go out there and make it do what it do. I, I believe in you, and I know that you are going to do some amazing things now and in the future. Have a good evening, everybody. Peace.